the teachings of the Buddha, the long discourses of the Buddha, a translation of the Dignikaya, translated from the Pali by Maurice Walsh, to the Sangha, East and West. Forward. It is with much pleasure that I write this free forward to Mr. Walsh's translation of the Dignikaya. The translator is a devout Buddhist whose Pali scholarship is backed up by personal practice of meditation. His translation work is, therefore, a most important contribution to the study of Buddhism. Mr. Walsh has been active in Buddhist world of Great Britain for many years. Long before I came to Britain, his name was known to me through his essays in the real series of the Buddhist publication Society of Sri Lanka. In 1977, my wonderful teacher, Tanadan Cha Subhakto, and I arrived in London at the invitation of the English Sangha Trust, of which Mr. Walsh was one of the trustees. This trust had been established in 1956 in order to bring about a Western Sangha in Britain and towards this end. Mr. Walsh has consistently worked for nearly 30 years. At one time, he combined this with the post of Vice President of Buddhist Society of Great Britain. His career at the Institute of Germanic Studies in London University, of which his translation of the sermons of Mr. Eckhart are testimonial, as well as studying Pali in his spare time. Even though Pali scholars have produced quite accurate literal translation of the Pali canon, one often feels the lack of profound insight into these remarkable scriptures. The suttas need to be studied, reflected on, and practiced in order to realize their true meaning. They are dhamma discourses or contemplation on the way things are. They are not meant to be scared scriptures which tell us what to believe. One should read them, listen to them, think about them, contemplate them, and investigate the present reality, the present experience with them. Then, and only then, can one insightfully know the truth beyond words. In this new translation of the long discourses Mr. Walsh has kindly offered to us, another opportunity to read and reflect on the Buddha's teachings. May all those who read them benefit and develop in their practice of the Dhamma. May all beings be freed from all suffering, May all beings be enlightened. Venerable Sumedhatera, Amaravati, Great Gaddesden, Hertfordshire, England, January 1986. Preface The two main reasons for making this translation of some of the oldest Buddhist scriptures are the spread of Buddhism as a serious way of life in the Western world and of even more widespread serious interest in as subject worthy of close study. And the fact that English is now effectively the world language, the most widespread linguistic vehicle for all forms of communication. True, the Pali scriptures have already been translated in almost their entirely into English, mainly through the devoted effort of the Pali text society, which has now entered into the second century of its activity. But existing translations are now dated stylistically as well as containing many errors and a modern version has therefore become necessary. First and foremost, the entire made for this translation belongs to the Venerable Balangoda Ananda Maitri Mahanayaka Thera, Agamaha Pandita, though he has of course no need of such punna for having convinced me that I could, and therefore of course should, undertake this task. To me there remains merely the demerit of its many imperfections. Working on it has provided me with much joy, solace and illumination. My particular thanks for help and encouragement are due, beside the illustrious and in all senses venerable gentleman just mentioned, to the venerable Dr. H. Sadatis, a friend of many years standing from whom I have learned so much, the Venerable Jnana Purnika who inspired an earlier, more modest venture in translation, the Venerable Dr. W. Rahula who guided my early, faltering steps in Pali, as well as the Venerable P. B. Fassi and Messrs. K. R. Norman and Ellis Cousins, 
whose collective brains I have picked on naughty points. It is fitting also to pay tribute here to the Venerable Ajahn Chah, Bodhinyana Thore, and his illustrious pupil Ajahn Sumedho, whose efforts in establishing a flourishing branch of the Sangha in Britain have made such translation work all the more necessary, and others please note, much remains to be done in this field. My principles of translation are briefly discussed in the introduction. I am aware of few trifling inconsistencies as well as few repetitions in these notes. The form will, I think, cause no inconveniences. They were hard to avoid altogether in this. Quite possibly the last translation these scriptures will receive without benefit of electronic gadgetry. And as for the repetitions, this can perhaps be overlooked in connection with a text which is itself so repetitious. My sincere thanks are due to Wisdom Publications for producing this book so splendidly and to the Buddhist Society of Great Britain for a generous donation towards costs. Morris Walls, St. Albans, Hertfordshire, England, January 1986.